Today's video is going to be all about how to grow mangroves. And what we have here is a white mangrove and a red mangrove. And they're growing in these sort of tubs of water. And they're just sitting here. And I just wanted to show that because it's really easy to grow these plants. And they can grow just sitting in a wet tub of soil. That's not my preferred method. So I'm going to go to show you how I personally grow these plants. So today's video is going to be all about growing mangroves and these are actually not that hard of a plant to grow, although I don't think any plant is really super difficult. So these mangroves, you can find them around Florida. I've got two species here. The first one is these red mangroves and I also have white mangroves in the back of the tub here. And you can find mangroves online. If you look on eBay or something, you can probably find the seeds or the propagules, depending on which species you want. Also, a lot of saltwater aquarium stores will sell little mangrove propagules that you can buy, and then eventually you can grow a big plant like this. So, what kind of container is the best for growing mangroves? Well, some people just stick them in their salt water or fresh water aquarium, or like I showed you, some people just put it in a tub and grow it in that. But what I like to do is I like to put them in standard plastic plant containers. And then what I do is I put all these containers into a big plastic tub and I fill the tub up with water. And the reason I like this method is because if there's some kind of problem, you can quickly fix it. So you can adjust if you want to flood the plants or if you want to drop the water level really down let them dry out a little bit. Also, what's good with this method is sometimes since you're fertilizing these, there can be a bacterial or an algae bloom and it's way easier in this method to just take the potted plants out, dump the water, and then you can add new fresh water to the tub and then solve your problem really quickly in just a matter of minutes. So mangroves like to grow in really muddy soil and what I found that works the best is reed sedge peat moss and it's different from sphagnum peat moss basically what reed sedge peat moss is is a bunch of ground up grasses and it's really thick and muddy and you can grow these in peat moss because if it's flooded eventually it's gonna turn really soft and soggy and muddy um, but one thing you want to keep in mind is when you first plant these you don't want to flood it you pretty much want to fill the container up with soil and then sort of sit them halfway in water because that way the soil will absorb all the moisture and it'll sort of turn into that thick muddy uh, soil that they like to grow in. Um, if you flood it when you first plant them all that soil is just going to wash out so you sort of just want to try to pick sort of a muddy soil to begin with plant them in that and sort of wait for a month or two until it turns really uh, dense and then you can flood these and then the soil won't go away and what I do also is I put about an inch of sand on top of this and eventually that sand is going to cake down and then you sort of have this pot where you can flood it and then the substrate isn't going to go away as for the water parameters what I grow them in is brackish water, and which is a mix of half salt water and half fresh water. I know people have a lot of opinions on how mangroves should be growing. Some people, they want to replicate the salinity of the ocean. Some people, they say grow them in pure fresh water. What I do is a mixture of both. So you can go to the aquarium store, pick up a box of salt, and they should also be selling hydrometers, which will tell you the amount of salt in the water. So when you mix up your water, you want a measurement of 1.016, which is sort of a half and half between fresh water and ocean water. And they can fluctuate because in nature, high tides and low tides come in. And when it's low tide, the sun will dry out the soil and that'll elevate the concentration of salt. So they can handle a wide range. I've had these go to uh, 1.027 at the higher end of the salt meter. And I've also had the water drop down to 1.008. So it's not really too big of a deal if the salinity changes and they can grow in fresh water and salt water. The thing that you want to remember is don't change the environment too fast. So 
if you take them from fresh water and stick them in a salt water aquarium, they might freak out. And basically you wanna make changes really slowly. And what I recommend is just keeping it around 1.016, which is that brackish water level, and they'll grow fine. As you can see, they're putting out a lot of new growth, and I've had these in this tub for about four years, and they seem to grow fine. And since they're tropical plants, pretty much you want to give them as much sunlight as possible. So in the summertime, I'll stick them outside in full sun, and they'll just sit there from about May until September, and then I'll bring them indoors in October. And if you don't have a greenhouse like this, you're going to need to provide artificial light in the wintertime. And you can buy just my standard go-to light, which is what they were growing under last winter. Uh, it's a CFL bulb and it's 6500K and it's 15,000 lumens. And that doesn't seem like too much, but it was enough to get them through the winter. It was just one of those standard bulbs like I have in my carnivorous plant video, screwed into a clamp light and it was just hanging over all of them. What you can also do is just buy uh, T5 shop lights from the hardware store and hang those over the mangroves and they should do fine. Mangroves love to grow in nutrient rich soil. So in terms of fertilizer, what I do is I put Osmocote pellets on the top of the soil. I'll also pour Osmocote into the big tub of water here. Um, I use standard blue 20-20-20 liquid soluble fertilizer and I'll pour that into the tub of water. And then one thing I found that they really like is an organic fertilizer. So what I'll do is I'll take blood meal, bone meal, and fish emulsion. And what I'll do is I'll pour those into a bucket and I'll add a little bit of water if necessary and mix it up until it's sort of a cake batter consistency. And I'll take that mixture and I'll pour it into metal pans and I'll dry it out in the sunlight. And then once it's almost dry, I'll cut it into one inch cubes and dry those out further. And then every couple of months, you can take one or two of these cubes. You can uncover some of the sand, put the fertilizer cube down in the soil and bury all the sand back. And then that's gonna be sort of a slow release organic fertilizer for a number of months. And they're really gonna like that. They're just gonna grow like crazy. The last thing I figured I'd talk about is temperature. So since these are tropical plants, they like it warm. And you, they can get a little cold because in Florida, sometimes it gets, you know, really cold. Sometimes it'll snow a little bit. So what I would be cautious of is letting it go underneath 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty much if you're gonna be growing these around your house, you can control the temperature. So outside in the summertime, everything's fine. They can handle really hot temperatures and you just kind of don't want it to go underneath 70 degrees. So once the weather starts cooling around October and it's gonna be underneath 70, in the nighttime you wanna bring these indoors and uh, grow them uh, inside a warm place over the winter time. So either in a greenhouse or in your house with grow lights.